Today, what I wanna talk about is three ways you can zoom in on a document in PowerPoint. Let's head over to PowerPoint now on my desktop. I'm gonna start off with a blank presentation. So I've got a blank presentation. I'm just gonna make two slides really quick. First, I'm gonna change uh, the design and I'm gonna to go to a different color. Uh, let's choose this black variant. And I will hit Control D just to duplicate it. I'm gonna open up a folder that has JPEGs inside. These are um, nine JPEGs that were created from the one PDF, which is JTX03, uh, which is the PDF that we've been working with on a couple of videos now. Uh, I went over this a little bit in the video on how to use PDFs, so this will be a little bit of review. What I did was I opened the PDF and then just saved it as a JPEG, uh, and I save a copy of it in a folder labeled uh, PPT for the PowerPoints, or sometimes I label it demonstratives. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag and drop just the first page on slide one, so that way we can talk about the patent. If you need to put, you know, like a header or a footer, a bar on top of your slides for like an opening, uh, that's something you can do and you just resize the document to make it smaller. Let's make that slide one. On slide two, I'm gonna go ahead and go to the last page, which is where the claims are for this particular patent. And here, uh, I'm going to do, first, I'm going to make a call out, which is the traditional way that I normally teach students how to zoom in on a document. The area that I want to zoom in on is this area down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a call out. The way that I make call outs is I get the document on the slide as I want it, and then I'll hit Control D to make a copy of it, shut that design ideas window down. And then in the format ribbon, with this new one selected, I have two copies, you can see that there. In the format ribbon, or if I can right click, I will get a crop option. So I can right click and get crop. And then I will crop down to just the section area that I want. And for this one, I just want to get claim one. So we'll narrow it down to claim one, right? And then I'll select off of the document itself, or I can hit escape if I can't, if it's too big, um, just to kind of accept the changes. And now I have a little version uh, of the area and the original document. From then, I will move this into a spot that I can grab it and make it bigger. Now notice I grabbed it from the corners, I didn't grab it from the sides, which would make it squished or stretched, uh, or from the top or bottom, which would squish or stretch it that way. Instead, uh, I grabbed it from the corners, so that way everything stays in the correct kind of aspect ratio. And I notice here that there's some kind of rough edges and there's a little bit of extra text that I don't want to show up, so I'm gonna go through and crop a little bit more. Cropping is non-destructive, which means I can go through and uncrop or recrop however I need to. Um, when I'm doing using the crop tool in PowerPoint, it's not like deleting anything. And here I can't click off the document, so I'll just hit escape to um, accept the changes. And I have a very clean callout. Now what I usually like to do for the callout is give it a little bit of um, depth and distinction from the underlying document, because otherwise it kind of blurs in all this like white space that's here. So what I like to do is select the call out on the format ribbon. I'll grab a quick picture border. I usually use something in this dark navy to dark gray area. And let's just use that one for here. And then I also like to put a little bit of a drop shadow. I know drop shadows are falling out of favor a little bit, but I think having a very subtle one goes a long way in terms of helping the jurors understand what's happening. So for this one, I have two options. I can make it kind of as big or as tall as the document, uh, as the slide will allow me to. Or what I would probably do on something like this is make it a little bit bigger, uh, but not as big as I can make it, and then kind of center it over the area on the original document where it comes from, and you'll see why. I'm gonna now animate it. And so the animation that I use is, I'll go to animations. I like to use this one called Zoom. So I'll select that, as soon as you do, it gives you a little preview of what it's gonna look like. And then I'm gonna also open the animation pane if yours isn't already open, so that I can play around with some of the attributes of this animation. What I want to happen, and this is gonna be different depending on each person's style, is I want the callout to come out right away after about a little bit of a delay, so we can see the original whole page document, and then automatically, without me having to click anything on my clicker, I want them to call out to pop and appear. So what I'll do is I'll come up here and you can do it up here. There's options up here. If you don't see these on your PowerPoint, you might need to make your uh, PowerPoint window a little bit bigger to take up more of the screen. Uh, or if you open the animation pane, you can get a lot of these options uh, by hitting this triangle. 
When I do that, I get the first three options are kind of click or when do you want the animation to happen options. And I want it to happen after previous. So as soon as I get to this slide, uh, the animation will happen. I remember I wanted to talk about the document first or at least show that first to the jury before the animation started happening. So I'll put on a delay of about a half second. That gives the jurors time to see it and then the call out will come out automatically, again, without me having to push anything. And the reason why I'm worried about me not having to push anything is not because I'm lazy about the buttons. I just think it's easier and more intuitive if there are fewer clicks. So the things that you know you're gonna want to have happen, I like to automate uh, rather than have everything on a click because then if there's too many clicks, what tends to happen is the attorney will lose sync in terms of their script and where they think they are in the PowerPoint and where they actually are in terms of the juror screen. So I try to automate some things to the extent I can. I usually try to keep a one click per slide rule. So let's take a look at this PowerPoint. I'll hit F5 uh, on my PC and we're going to the PowerPoint presentation now. We see the first page of JTX03 and now we can talk about the claims. I clicked it once and then automatically the call out appeared and now I can start talking about whatever language I need to talk about in this claim. That's one way to do it. That's the way that I normally make call outs in PowerPoint. Uh, it might be a little bit dated. Uh, and you're going to find that a lot of people that have been doing this for a long time all will naturally kind of make their callouts that way. Now let me show you a little bit more of a modern way. And what I'm going to do is I hit Control M to bring in a new slide, and then I just selected all the stuff that PowerPoint tries to help me with. Anything that PowerPoint tries to help me with, I just kind of like to get rid of. So I'm going to have that. I'll make a copy of that so I have a, just a spacer uh, just for me mentally to keep the different examples clear. And what I'll do is I'll bring in another copy of that page nine and I'll put it on slide four, close this design ideas thing. And what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna make a copy of slide four. I have two copies of the same document on two consecutive slides. And instead of making a call out by cropping down to the area that I want, I'm just gonna make the document bigger to the size of the claim that I wanna be able to show to the jurors. And so I'll click the image and grab it again by a corner and it's starting to get much bigger than kind of my workspace so I'm going to come down to the lower left hand corner here and zoom out a couple of clicks or I could if you're using a mouse you can hit control and scroll wheel and that'll also zoom really fast so I'm going to make this really big and as I'm doing that you can kind of see the outline of the the slide behind it so I could see kind of where things would be and I'm going to move this and I, and I can also look, at, if you look at number five in the corner here, you get a preview of what is within the boundaries of that slide and what's uh, beyond the boundaries. And so here, if I look at, I can kind of see that I think that's enough in terms of me being able to show all of claim one. I'm showing a little bit extra, but that's okay. Uh, let me try to make it a little bit tighter. And now what I'll do is to connect the slide before it, which showed the whole page, and the next slide, which zooms in on the area that I want, I'm gonna use a transition called Morph. I've made a video about Morph Transition if you want to learn a little bit more about it. But basically what it does is it looks at two slides, figures out what's the same between the two, kind of connects them with animations. A lot like Magic Move and Keynote, if you're familiar with that. It's somewhat smart. When it works, it's really amazing. Sometimes it doesn't work though. So I'm going to put Morph on slide five. And you'll see you got a little bit of a preview of what that does. But now if I run the PowerPoint presentation, Let's start just at the beginning. We've got uh, page one of JTX03. This trial is gonna be about the claims. Claim one is important. So let's rewind that back. Maybe we don't wanna do that kind of way. So instead, let's talk about claim one is gonna be really important. Now I'll click and, I, and I'll say, here's what claim one says. You'll see it during the course of this trial. And it's zoomed in. And the reason why I think this is a little bit more of a modern way to do it uh, is because two things, one, most people that are, have been doing this as long as I have uh, or longer, morph transition didn't exist for them, so they don't know about this, they don't use it, they don't like to use it. Number two, the reason why I think the morph transition and zooming in on a document this way is more of a modern way to do it is because when you zoom in on something on your phone, you pinch and zoom. Or if you're using TrialPad for the iPad when you're zooming in on a document, pinching and zooming is kind of the most natural way of interacting with like a touch interface. So people are used to that. So I've been really liking using the morph transition whenever I can to zoom in on documents. Now let me show you the third way of doing it. This is kind of a, a very like quick and dirty way of making a call out. And really I only recommend this if you're like in a pinch and let's say like 
you've made like a very last minute audible uh, and someone has told you hurry up make this change as like the jury's coming out of the box and you don't have time to make either a call out or set up a morph transition to zoom in on something. What you can do is, and I'll put a blank spacer there, I'll go to slide seven and let's get page nine uh, for claim one in there again and I'm just gonna leave it. All I'm gonna do is just put the page on the slide and I'll show you what I can do it and what I'll do is I will turn, make sure that presenter view is on. So if I go to slideshow, there is the option here for presenter view. Um, I'll make sure that's on and now I'm gonna show you what it would look like if I'm in a two monitor setup and all I have is slide seven and I need to zoom in on something. So I hit Alt F5 and that gives me uh, just a presenter view if you're not connected to an external monitor. But let's go to slide seven. I'm gonna hit seven to get to seven enter just to get to slide seven. And now I'm on this just blank page. There's no animation on it. There's no call up. There's no morph transition set up. But in newer versions of PowerPoint, you get this tool in your presenter view, the magnifying glass. When I do that, it gives me kind of like a, a preview of the area that I would zoom in on. So let's say I need to go to claim one, I click on it, it zooms in on that part of the document for me. I can then use, uh, I see I have a hand cursor. I can click and drag if I need to look at something else. To zoom back out, I just right click and it brings you back to the original size of the document. So it's a really quick way of, if you don't know how to remember, if you don't remember how to make the call outs or use the morph transitions, you can at least just put a page onto the screen and zoom in at least a little bit. The limitation being, I can only zoom in that far and no further. I'm gonna give you a little bit of a bonus today is one way that I recommend not to zoom in on a document in PowerPoint. So let's um, just copy slide six and seven, duplicate those, slide nine, I'll show you how not to do it. So let's just do it, for example, how not to zoom in. So we'll just type that in there so it's, it's clear. So one thing that I've seen people do to zoom in on a document is to use an emphasis animation. And so one of the things that you can do is you can make things appear with animations or enter animations, or you can have exit animations in terms of ways to make things disappear. And in the middle you have emphasis animations. So let's twirl this down so we can look at some of these emphasis animations here. And one of the ones that they have is grow shrink. Right? So I can set it so that way a document will get bigger and smaller. You can alter the duration of the animation and let's open up that animation pane even further to see if we have some other effect options. If you go to the effect options, you can make it grow even a bigger amount, even a custom amount. Let's say I need it to be 300% bigger. Okay, enter. Now that's what it's gonna do. I can adjust smooth start, smooth end, things like that. Let's just leave all that for now. The problem with this is I can't exactly control, like I need to zoom in on claim one, which is kind of not exactly dead center of this document. It's in the lower left hand side. And so if I hit that animation, it just zooms in on that one spot. And so it doesn't give me exactly what I want. And if you look at it, let's look at this in slideshow mode. If I hit the animation to go, not only doesn't it, it's hard to control exactly what it zooms in, it just zooms in on whatever's in the center, but the text is, is blurry. Right? And so I can't, I'm not getting a very crisp image. It's just giving me kind of, it took a screenshot of the document at the size that I inserted on the slide and then zoomed in on kind of like a copy of a copy kind of situation going on here. So you're not gonna really get cr clean, crisp text if you're using the grow shrink animation. So that's one that I would avoid. And those are my three ways to make something zoom in in PowerPoint and one way to avoid. If you have any questions about that or any PowerPoint questions in general, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'd love to talk to you guys down there. Thanks for watching and I will see you on the next one.